Hi everyone, we are from Sunway Osmat Physics 8. I am Rong Han, the group leader, along with four of my group members. Let me introduce my group members. So this is our group photo. From the picture, the person from left side is Daniel Law, followed by me, Andrew, Moon, and Hong Jun. Today, we are going to talk about non-ferrous metal separator using principle of electromagnetic induction, which is question 4. So before we begin our presentation, I would like to ask you guys some questions. What is non-ferrous metal? Does any one of you familiar with this word? And have you guys ever wondered how a large amount of metal waste can be recovered and separated efficiently every day? So today we'll go through some small topics which are what is non-ferrous metal? Faraday's law, Lenz law, and electromagnetic induction. How non-ferrous metal separator work? The modification of non-ferrous metal separator. So I am going to talk about what is non-metal and metal. But I am going to emphasize more on metal because metal can be differentiated in two types, which is non-ferrous metal and ferrous metal. Non-metal is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. It is a non-ductile and brittle solid which is not shiny, so they gain electron easily. That's all for non-metal. For metal, a rough idea to differentiate between non-ferrous metal and metal is non-ferrous metal does not contain iron and ferrous metal contain iron. Therefore, non-ferrous metal have no magnetic property while ferrous metal have magnetic property. Let me ask you guys a question. What is the reason behind the invention of non-ferrous metal separator? This is because non-ferrous metal are more valuable and costly than ferrous metal since they have more resistance to corrosion and higher conductivity. Examples of non-ferrous metal are aluminium, titanium, gold, platinum, and many more. For ferrous metal, some of the examples are iron, mild steel, high carbon steel, and so on. Next, I will be talking about principle of electromagnetic induction. Principle of electromagnetic induction includes Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Faraday's law states that the magnitude of the induced electromotive force (EMF) is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage in the solenoid, or the rate at which a conductor cuts through the magnetic flux. The induced EMF increases when the rate of change of flux increases. Hence, the induced current is increased when a stronger magnet is used, the speed of relative motion is increased, the induced EMF increases when the number of turns increases because an EMF is induced in each turn of wire. Lenz law states that the induced current will produce a magnetic flux that opposes the changing magnetic flux. I will show you the principle of Lenz law using this diagram. According to Lenz law, when a conductor experiences a change in magnetic flux, an induced current will be produced. To generate its own magnetic flux, which opposes the changing magnetic flux. In the first diagram, the magnet is moved towards the solenoid. Based on Lenz law, the induced current will flow in a direction which opposes the motion causing it. In order to oppose the motion, the left side of the solenoid will become a temporary north pole. So, the induced current must flow in a way that causes the left side to be the north pole. By applying the right hand grip rule, the induced current will flow from the North Pole to the South Pole. 
In the sec second diagram, the magnet is removed from the solenoid. The magnetic flux in the solenoid decreases. Therefore, in order to oppose the change, opposite pose is induced at the end of solenoid that is closest to the magnet. Consequently, the induced current flows in the same direction as the direction of the movement of the magnet. In the third diagram, the magnet is moved towards the solenoid. This time, the south pole of the magnet is moved towards the solenoid. The magnetic flux in the solenoid increases. Therefore, the same pole is induced at the end of the solenoid, which is closest to the magnet to oppose the change. Consequently, the direction of the current flow in the direction that is opposite to the direction of the movement of the magnet. In the fourth diagram, the magnet is moved away from the solenoid. This time, the sub-pole of the magnet is closest to the end of the solenoid. The magnetic flux in the solenoid decreases. Therefore, the opposite pole is induced at the end of the solenoid, which is closest to the magnet in order to oppose a change. Consequently, the direction of the current flow in the same direction as the direction of the movement of the magnet. Lenz law is also a form of law of conservation of energy. This is because when there is a change in the magnetic flux, there is always an opposite force occurring in the solenoid. This is a work done. Uh, excuse me. A work done must be done to overcome the opposing force. The work done to oppose a force is converted into electrical energy, which creates the induced current. So now I'm going to talk about eddy current. What is eddy current? Eddy current are currents which circulate in conductors like swirling eddies in a stream. They are induced by changing magnetic fields and flow in closed loop, perpendicular to the plane of the magnetic field. They can be created when a conductor is moving through a magnetic field, or when the magnetic field surrounding a stationary conductor is varying. For example, anything which results in the conductor experiencing a change in the intensity or direction of a magnetic field can produce eddy current. The size of the eddy current is proportional to the size of the magnetic field, the area of the loop, and the rate of change of magnetic flux, and inversely proportional to the resistivity of the conductor. Like any current flowing through a conductor, an eddy current will produce its own magnetic field. Lenz law states that the direction of magnetic of magnetically induced current like an eddy current will be such that the magnetic field produced will oppose the change of magnetic field which created it. This resistance created by the opposing magnetic fields is exploited in the eddy current breaking which is commonly used as a method of stopping rotation rotating power tools and roller coasters. This is a very large industrial strength magnet. It's made of rare earth metal, uh, neodymium magnet stall. It's made of iron, boron, and nickel. And uh, it has two sides, on the north side and the south side. And this is a piece of pure copper. And what the magnet induces in the copper is called the eddy current. It basically generates small pools of swirling electrons that resist the movement of the magnetic field that this induces on this. So what that does basically is resist the magnet from falling like a normal object on a piece of wood. Um, so it kind of pushes itself as you can see. And then you can spin it, you can drop it, and you can induce torque onto the copper from the magnet itself. So without touching I can move.
piece of copper. And that's basically what I do here at Mega Drive is I use a bunch of these to spin a very large disk. And that disk increases torque. And that creates a coupling without actually touching one shaft to another. So that's my job. If one day you were given a bag of scrap consists of recyclable material left over from product manufacturing and consumption, such as part of vehicles, building supplies, and surplus materials. If your job is to separate the matter, how are you going to separate non-ferrous matter and ferrous matter? We can actually use non-ferrous matter separator to do it easily. Non Ferrous metal separator, also as known as the eddy current separator, is an advanced separator that excellent separates non-ferrous metals like aluminium, copper, brass from inert materials like glass, stones, plastic, wood, and eliminates the smallest part of the ferrous metal left from the sorting with magnetic separator. It presents a great benefit. You can have all three different types of material purely sorted and downloaded directly into separate containers. So, the point is how a non-ferrous metal separator works. A non-ferrous metal separator has a conveyor belt system with a high speed magnetic motor at the end. The rotational speed of the magnets generates an induction field, creating a rapidly changing magnetic field on the surface of the conveyor belt. When, co when the conducting particles move through this changing flux on the conveyor, a resulting magnetic field and eddy current are induced. The magnetic field of the non-ferrous metal particles interact with the magnetic field of the rotating drum. This interaction gives the non-ferrous metal particle kinetic energy and these particles are thrown off the end of the conveyor with a varying energies causing different trajectory depending on the conductivity of the particles. After all, the eddy current focus forces generally by the magnetic motor must overcome the effect of the gravity on the object ejected piece of matter. The most conductive materials interact the most with the magnetic field and have the longest trajectories. Meanwhile, non-metallic elements such as plastic labels and paint do not interact with the magnetic field at all. They simply fall off the end of the conveyor belt under the influence of gravity. Now, let's watch a short video which will help you to comprehend our explanation regarding the separator better. Extremely intense magnetic fields. This way, the eddy current separator not only separates the big particles, but it can also separate the small ones. The smallest particles being those of half a millimeter. The adjustable angle setting of the magnet rotor makes the eddy current separator suitable for almost all materials. Separation coverage for valuable particles is horizontally and vertically adjustable. This way it is easy to achieve the best possible separation. The eddy current separator is built according to the eccentric magnet rotor principle. This technique prevents the weld penetration of the iron particles on the magnet rotor. The eddy current separator is a robust design with a durable PU conveyor belt. Lastly, according to our research, several modifications can be made to improve the separation efficiency of the non-ferrous metal separator. First of all, let me show you all the basic non-ferrous metal separator model. 
Moving on to the next slide, we are going to talk about the, the modifications that can be made to improve the separation efficiency of the non-ferrous metal separator. First of all, we can use first of all we can use an inclined conveyor belt instead of the original flat conveyor belt. By using an inclined conveyor belt, the trajectory change and the smaller metal scrap can be repelled further, which consequently increases the separation efficiency. Next, we, next, we can also use a roll crusher. A roll crusher should be installed to crush big pieces of scrap into smaller pieces. By crushing the bigger pieces of scrap into smaller pieces, separation of the scrap will become easier, thus enhancing the separation efficiency of the machine. Lastly, <coughs> Sensors can also be installed to detect the mass of different types of scrap. Then the speed of the motor can be adjusted accordingly to increase the repulsive force so that smaller metallic scrap can be repelled easily. In conclusion, a non-ferrous metal separator works in accordance with the principles of electromagnetic induction. This is separate this separator is capable of separating domestic and industrial waste into two individual containers. Thus, it helps to reduce and recycle waste efficiently and in an environmental friendly way. However, we believe that several modifications can be made to make this machine more efficient in terms of separation of waste. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.